All right, the 10th biggest transaction. I'm doing transaction like what's the most significant. That's, just, that's what I would say. It's not like what's the best deal, but what matters the most? What's the most relevant? What's the most likely that we're gonna talk about it during the regular season? We're gonna be like, wow, that was a good trade back in the off season. That's mostly what I'm talking about. Also, Chris Paul's 10. But a transaction means that guys swapped teams in this context. So like an extension, uh, or a guy like Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, not on this list because it wasn't a transaction. It was a transaction that happened before the trade deadline and it just was a re-signing or a, not an extension. It was just a re-signing. They re-signed those guys. They didn't transact. I don't know if that's the right definition, but Chris Paul is number 10. And this is like such a strange contract to me. It's $11 million dollars which feels like a lot, it feels like a lot of money, but at the same time, Chris Paul did, he had meaningful minutes and he did get meaningful points. So he isn't, uh, he isn't a flyer guy. He can deliver, he can get you assists, he can get you 1.2 steals a game. He's good, he still has something left. $11 million is fine. It's, I think it's a little bit of an overpay for Chris Paul, no disrespect to Chris Paul, but, um, he's probably going to get injured. I think he's 39 at this point. I think. I think he's the same age as LeBron. Um, why is he on this team? Typically, a guy would uh, ring chase, right? At this point in his career, he's like, yeah, I got to be on a team. I got to do the McGrady. I'll join the Spurs on a really cheap deal. Maybe I can finally get that ring. Well, no, because the Spurs aren't going to, they're not going to even try to be good, right? They try, like, they're trying to they uh, traded away Rob Dillingham for a couple of really distant future first round picks. They don't care, they don't wanna be good. So I find it very weird that Chris Paul's like, okay, I'll take this one year $11 million deal and be a coach, be kind of a coach for Jeremy Sochan. Is that what's happening? What, uh, does, and then, but Chris Paul also says he doesn't wanna coach. So I have no idea, maybe they'll, maybe he signed a one year deal. He signs this one year $11 million deal and he's like, hey, Here's the deal. I'll help you guys out. I'll do a little, I'll do my Chris Paul magic. I'll do what I did with Shea, okay? That's what I'll do, but then you gotta get my ass out of here before the trade deadline. Cause I want a ring on my hand. Uh, you know, is that, I don't know. I just don't know why you'd sign a deal with a team that's not trying to win. Uh, D'Anthony Melton, this is kind of a steal for the Golden State Warriors. They, like, I don't know how D'Anthony Melton was available. Mainly it's probably because, like, he's had some back problems. He's had some injury issues. Only played 38 games last season. But D'Anthony Melton is a good player, but he's just in that camp of injury-prone players. But the Warriors were desperate, dude. They came up empty-handed uh, from... I mean, and they're spending tons of money on this really bad team, and it's mainly because draft picks haven't really worked out. I think, at least. They're not good. So how do you find yourself in this position where you have these guys on very expensive deals, and uh, they're not good? Of course, waving Chris Paul, that was a good idea. They, that freed up some space, so now they have Anthony Melton and his teammate, Kyle Anderson. Um, I was looking, I thought Kyle Anderson was actually going to be the better acquisition for Golden State. I was looking at Kyle Anderson's stats. Dude, they're not good. Uh, I, I like Kyle Anderson. I like, I thought he was really great in the playoffs, or at least when he was playing against the Nuggets and I wanted the Nuggets to win. I was very frustrated often with Kyle Anderson. So it felt like a good acquisition, but then I'm like, I look at the stats and I'm like, dude, this guy's not, he doesn't suck. But he's not going to make this list. So that's why I chose the Anthony Melton over him. It is a one-year deal. Uh, I believe it was the mid-level exception. So they have to do it. I don't know what Golden State's doing. What do you do if you're if you're Steph? Because you're like, okay, I said I, you know, no, no, I'm kind of here. I'm supposed to be here, a warrior for life. But it looks like I'm not going to be even, like, I'm going to be on a playing team for the rest of my career. I guess I have to do it because I made a... You know, my wife's here, my family's here, I live here. That team sucks. I mean, I think it's the same way with the Lakers, but I think LeBron's successfully deluded himself into believing that the Lakers have a chance. Maybe Steph has too, I don't know. Denny Avdia, I actually really like, this was like a, this was big. 
the <clears throat> the Blazers were like, we're gonna lay out for it. We want Denny Avdia. We want him to be a part of our team. And I think a thing about Denny Avdia, I have to imagine, I have to imagine Denny Avdia had to say to the Wizards, I don't want to be a part of this organization anymore. I think that had to have something to do with it. I would have to imagine the Wizards um, were kind of open to people asking about him. But at the same time, it felt like a very calculated move by Portland to say, hey, we want, that. we'll give you this, 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 this. So they got a first, they got second round pick, second round pick, first round pick. Bud Carrington and Malcolm Brogdon. We'll, we'll give you that. So it does feel like they Portland did really want Denny, but I have to imagine Denny wasn't. Denny has to be like, I hate it here because he's a hardworking guy. He plays defense, and uh, I got a feeling he doesn't get along with Jordan Poole. I know. I remember that. Like Corey Kispert does not get along with Jordan Poole. He does not uh, like the guy, and I got a feeling Denny. Uh, said, hey, put me, like, you know, put me out of my misery. Send me to Portland. Like, Portland sucks, too. I know, but at least it'll suck in a different way. So I'm happy for Denny. Um, and they got this uh, they got this trade done before free agency, which I, I think they probably got a better deal on him not doing it during all the chaos of free agency. So good on them for doing it on draft night. And it also makes me feel this way about Portland. It feels like a very intentional deal to find like a sort of a sleeper pick guy like Denny and say, dude, this guy had a great season and he kind of flew under the radar. It, this is what's interesting. Those Wizards guys, there's always like a Wizards guy that has a good season. Like last year, people, when uh, Boston traded for Kristaps, people were like, oh, wow, why would they trade for that guy? He's kind of injury prone, blah, blah, blah. He kind of had his reputation. But if you look, you're like, oh, because he was good. He had a really good season. I think the same thing is happening again. The Wizards, all they really need to do is like, let's just have one or two guys that actually have really good seasons here, and then we'll trade them for two second round picks and a first round pick. And Malcolm Brogdon, uh, everyone thinks they can flip Malcolm Brogdon for something. Uh, he was a he was a blazer the entire season last year. Got a feeling he's gonna be a wizard the entire season this year, so. I like it. KCP, seven. The thing, okay, this was like a slight overpay. So he's getting three years, 20 million goes up to 23 million. It's a, it's a slight overpay by Orlando, but, the th but if you're Orlando, you do overpay. That's what you do. You don't really get free agents very often, so you pay that type of money for a guy like KCP. I love KCP though, so I shouldn't have just come out of the gate saying, hey, what an overpay. I really do. And he's won two championships. And he's, you know, what, top five, top ten, three and D player in the league. I like it. I really, and uh, I think he can shoot, he can shoot a three. Orlando Magic can't shoot threes. This will be really great for them. Look at a guy to kick it out to, uh, and you don't really lose anything on defense. So I'm really happy about it. I'm happy for KCP. He's going to get his money. Um, the Nuggets could have kept him. Uh, they could have kept him. I believe they would have kept him and they would have gone over into the second apron, which, whatever, big whoop. If your team's good, you go over the second apron and you're like, oh, we can't make any adjustments. Your team's good. Don't worry. What are you going to, you know, we, we can't do anything else. We have no flexibility. Good. You want to lock it in. You don't want to even be tempted by the idea that you could make a bad decision. Um, but hey, you know, as a, the Cronkies apparently are they're about the fiscalness of managing sports teams to some degree, I think. Because they run sports teams like businesses. It's not a vanity project for them. That's like their um, industry, you know. That's, that's, I believe so. They own everything. Um, so, Isaiah Hartenstein. This was definitely an overpay. But again, if you're Oklahoma City, a lot of times you just like don't get free agents. I mean, I was in the Oklahoma City Reddit doing research for this video, and that's what they were saying. They were like, we got a free agent. Yeah, and it's awesome. I mean, I think it's a kind of a crazy overpay. Isaiah Hardenstein, has, even when he was a Clipper, he was a backup. Um, yeah, but he had, a, he had a good playoffs, but I will say, he had, it was like a clutch playoffs, but if you look at his playoff numbers versus his regular season numbers, they're pretty much the same. So it wasn't like he overperformed in the playoffs and he got a good deal. People knew what they were getting into. So 
I do like him. I mean, is he going to be like the starting center? Then you're going to play Chet at the four? Is that what's going to happen? Uh, I don't know. But he got paid, man. He got paid, and I think this is just going to be a little bit too much money. But the uh, OKC needed a guy next to Chet. So they say. So they went and got him. Again, whatever. It, who's to say what an overpay is? There's an overpay for the Lakers, which is like, of course, the Lakers don't get any free agents either. So, ah, maybe it's not an overpay. Yeah, the price tag is pretty crazy, though. Good for him. Good for him. Caruso. Actually, this is what's funny. Everyone, everyone you talk to, uh, stock is way down on Giddy. Ever since, like, the statutory fill in the blank thing. Um, dude, he, he, people can't get past that. His stock is so low and it kind of just like went, you know, it went away, but the uh, stink is still there. For me, he looks like a boy. So I feel like it didn't come across as like predatory to me because I saw like photo of the girl or video of the girl for some reason. I saw that uh, and I was like, yeah, it's a boy and a girl, but it's still a crime. It's a crime. It's a crime. I know. I'm not justifying it, but in my head, I don't look at it. When I see him, I'm just like, oh boy. I'm not like, this guy's a sex criminal. Um, but his stock went way down. So I understand what the Bulls were doing, because the Bulls are like, because it, Caruso was more expensive than Giddy, but Giddy next year is going to be looking for an extension that he was not going to get in Oklahoma City. So that's why this happened. And more than likely, they traded for Caruso. They're like, okay, we got a guy on defense who is going to shoot threes. Dude, Caruso had a good three-point shooting year. He usually does not shoot 40% from three. Woo. Okay. This, is, this might be another excellent piece for Oklahoma City. Uh, they got a great defensive team now. This is going to be awesome. I, I, it's a team I'd like to see win. How awesome would it be if OKC won? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I no. I, I don't want to get into toxic talk, but uh, yeah, I liked. I honestly, I liked the Giddy. If you look, okay, if you look at stats and you're just looking comparing stats to stats, Alex Caruso and Josh Giddy, and then you're comparing contracts. Bulls won the deal, but you know, given what we know, uh, Alex Caruso does not need the ball in his hands. Giddy needs to make his own shot. You can pass the ball to Caruso; he can shoot it. Can't do that with Giddy. Giddy's got to. Shoot the shit out of somebody. Clay Thompson. This deal is actually good. If you look, like, Clay Thompson gets 17.9 points a game. Obviously, there are more elements to basketball than points, but um, for a guy that's on a 15, you know, 15, 16, 17, three year, million dollar deal, dude, you're not gonna get a guy that's scoring 18 points a game. That's a good deal. And like I said, you know, we're not looking at one specific stat, but if there's a guy getting 18, like he's scored, like KCP was getting 10 points a game. Clay Thompson is going to get 18 points a game. And uh, that's, that's crazy to me. And you're getting him for pretty cheap. It's a really good deal. Everyone criticizes Clay Thompson's defense. And am I an expert on Clay Thompson's defense? Everyone's like, oh, it's really gone downhill. Well, I'm like, how much downhill has it gone? Is he a zero? Is he is he a net negative on defense? I don't really know. I can't recall any defensive plays from Klay Thompson, but this is a great looking deal to me. Um, allegedly, I saw this on Gilbert Arena. This is a clip. I don't watch Gilbert Arena's podcast, but I saw a clip, and someone was saying that the Lakers offered him four year four years at eighty million. I don't think that's true. I think he would have taken it. And if he did, if he was offered that and he still went with the Mavericks, that is so damning for the Lakers. Because in my head, I think Klay Thompson, he didn't get extended. He was salty. He was mad. I don't think he wanted to be a warrior all year. I think he saw Jordan Poole get an extension, Wiggins get an extension, Draymond get an extension, and they, and they were like, okay, we'll worry about you when your contract's up. He was very offended by that, okay? So I think all season when the extension never came, eventually he's like, you know when you just, when, when the love is gone, in any type of situation, you know when the love is gone. The tree has rotted. The branch is dead. 
and there's no reviving it. It died. You can't resuscitate it. I think this happened way longer than we think it happened. So I think in his head, he's like, okay, he's already checked out and he's already like, I'm going to be on a different team and I'm going to choose a team that can beat the Warriors. I think that's the Dallas Mavericks. It's a good deal. I'm going to take that deal. I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks. That's what I'm going to go with. And I think it's a smart move because if you go with the Lakers, now you're sort of in the same position. You probably might not even beat the Warriors. So I like it. You know, what would you prefer Derek Jones Jr. at $10 million a year? That's who they had last year. 10 million versus Clay for 15. I think Derek Jones Jr. new deal with the Clippers is 30 million over three years. So I'll take Clay over Derek Jones Jr. And I like Derek Jones Jr. So yeah. And they added Najee Marshall, make up for the lack of defense. If there is a lack of defense, I again I don't know much about Clay's defense, but uh how much do we how much how much do we actually know about basketball and how much are we regurgitating the things we hear on podcasts? DeJounte Murray is three. This was like a big, this is a big move. And DeJounte Murray is good, uh, but the Hawks suck. I think that's sort of the duality that you're dealing, the paradox that you're dealing with. You're like, you look at his numbers, you're like, ooh, 30 million? He's on, he's under a long-term contract for a while. 2027, he has a player option, but oh man, we get three solid years of a guy that's good at like a two time. I believe he's or no, a, uh, he's been an all star. He's been all defensive team. You look at that and you're like, this is really good. You give up Dyson Daniels, who had a uh, who had a lot of potential. I don't really know what the Pelicans are going to do at the four. They gave up Larry Nance Jr. and Valanciunas is gone. Uh, so I don't know. I really don't know. Um, they and also what Brandon Ingram's not traded yet. He wasn't even in this deal And I'm pretty sure he is gonna get traded. Maybe he's not but I really do or CJ CJ maybe CJ because you know He's the shooting guard now you got Jante Murray That's an upgrade. That's an upgrade from CJ Especially defensively, so I don't know what's gonna happen with this team. I don't hate the deal They really didn't have to give up any major. I hate saying pieces. They didn't have to give up any major Parts of their team. Pieces. Pieces. I always think of a bo- ba- like a bucket of chicken. They say pieces. When you're like digging through the pieces of your team. DeJounte Murray is a breast. Small breast. So, I like it. I like any move. I like any... I, I don't... The, I mean, I don't really know what it does for the Hawks. You get picks. Maybe they'll take those picks and trade it for someone else. I think people are realizing the decreasing value of picks and especially protected picks. Mikel, I changed, he was on the list last week of uh, what? High expectation players. I changed the gifts though. The gifts are different except for one of them. I kept one. Um, his contract is cheap. I think it's a, I think it's great. This is the Knicks saying, yeah, whatever. We'll salvage We'll salvage our future. We want to be good now, and we want a team that people like and want to root for, because that's what they are. They're a group of guys that are joyfully playing basketball. And now they got their buddy who was across the street in Brooklyn, across the bridge in Brooklyn. And this is a happy team. This is like, you gave people what they want to root for, right? You, nah, that's why I feel blessed. I feel like the Knicks were like, you know what? Screw it. First round picks. We haven't really done too great with selecting picks anyway. We're developing players. We're not very good at it. So let's trade them to Brooklyn. See what they do with them. Because we were probably going to squander them. Remember RJ Barrett? Remember Emmanuel quickly? We don't. They're gone. Um, so I, I think it's a good idea. I think the Knicks are being smart. I think they're really being smart and saying, hey, we know what we're good at. We know what we've got here. Let's double down on what, we, what we're good at and uh, let's make a fun team that people are gonna root for. And yeah, and you also, the durability. Dude, Mikael Bridges with the extra credit, man. 2022, 2023, he had a bonus game because he was traded. How awesome is that? Uh, I, and again, I like durable guys that can hit their free throws. That's my type. PG. Okay, this is like a significant trade. I don't necessarily think it's good. What I'm going to tell you, it's a four-year deal. The last two years on that deal, 
The last year is $56 million. He's taken that deal. He's going to be 39 years old. I got a strong feeling he's going to get to that summer, summer 2027. 2027? Yeah, I guess that is it. Summer 2027, he's going to be 39. He's like, $56 million? I, I think I'll take it. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds about right. Yeah. Let me check for other offers out there. Anyone else interested in me? Maybe another max for your max? Nope, nobody, 56 million? All right, I'll take it. I got a feeling that's what's gonna happen. But you do have two years of dice roll Paul George. Is he gonna play in the playoffs? Is he not going to? You don't know. You got no idea. Uh, but it's way too much money for a guy, 22 points a game. You're getting him, you know, 49 million on that first year all the way to 56 million. It's way too much money. It's an incredibly huge overpay, but Daryl Morey is horny for stars. Always has been, always will be. And they did have cap space. What are you gonna do with all that cap space inside that trunk? Spend it. You gotta, you gotta take in guys. You need dudes. So I don't hate it. And you're gonna get two years of a, you know, good wing guy. Clippers fans are over Paul George. I was in Clippers Reddit. I am in Clippers Reddit and they just, you know, you can really, if you go into the reddits of specific teams, you'll find people who watch their team every night. And uh, yeah, they're apparently, Paul George is kind of done closing out on the perimeter. It's kind of not his thing anymore. And uh, a lot of posterized attempts that are completely unnecessary, says Clippers Reddit. They're uh, pretty frustrated with him. And yeah, if you're the Clippers, you needed to, it's just like, mm, we need a different look. We just can't do this Paul George, Kawhi Leonard thing. We'll do the Kawhi Leonard thing. He'll take a cheap deal. He'll take a cheaper deal. Paul George is like, me? No, I'm Paul George, I get a four year max. That's how this works. And it did, he got it from the Philadelphia 76ers. It's gonna be the third option making $49 million. This is like a good, really top heavy team. I don't like it, <clears throat> and I hope they lose. I don't like the guys on the team. I like Maxi, but the other guys on the team, I'm not crazy about. I don't like not like them. They're just sort of guys that I'm, you know, you see them win, and you're not like, wow, man, Paul George getting a ring. Feels good. Feels good. Ah, man, the cognitive dissonance that's in my brain for a guy that went that long without winning is now relieved. No, you don't. You're just like, eh, Paul George is a guy that you're like, nah, he's a guy I can live with never getting a ring. In my opinion. Uh, but it is it is an ego thing. By all accounts, Paul George would want to stay in LA, right? He's from Palmdale. He's got his podcast studio there. He has kids. Uh, you're not going to want to move to Philadelphia. Like, you're not going to want to. I don't know if the tax situation is much different either, but I think it's crazy. It, I, it's, it had to be definitely an ego decision to be like, screw you. I want that extra year or I'm leaving. So... Hey, do you, Paul George, do your thing. I'm happy you're not a clipper, so it kind of works out. What am I complaining about? I don't like my own life, so I have to nitpick other people's decisions in their life. So forgive me. I like my life. I'm just joking. So, that's it. That's all 10. Because your mothers eat a corn dog.